Well, it is that time of the week again. It's the Betfred Boxing Show. Delighted to have alongside me Anthony Million Dollar Crawler as ever. And we are going to be looking into the week ahead for Matchroom. There's a big event at the weekend, of course. Looking back at the action that we've just had. And uh, we're going to be going straight into that bubble because uh, oh. Lawrence Acoli is back in action. He's got a world title, Cruiserweight WBO title on the line again against Glavatsky. And uh, again, to get all the flavour from the bubble, we're joined by Chris McKenna, who is the boxing correspondent from the Daily Star. And Chris, just set the scene. Have you, you've done your test. You're in there. I'm sure you're just counting down the minutes now till you get stuck into everyone that's, uh, that's downstairs and everything else. What's going on? Yeah, so it was actually quite good. We got tested yesterday, and usually you've got to wait 22, 24 hours, but we got out last last night, so uh, could get down into the kind of communal area, played a bit of uh, table tennis and a few games of darts and got out of the room for a bit. Um, and we've been down there this morning already. Lawrence O'Coley hasn't been as lucky. He's came in a bit later yesterday, and his test results were de slightly delayed, so... He's only just in the last half hour or so being released from his room. So haven't got hold of Lawrence yet, but um, had a chat with his trainer, Shane McGuigan, this morning. And they, they're obviously in, in comfort and moved ahead of the weekend. And just about Lawrence, because he did get out before Christmas. This one's been put back, but again, you know, with, with everything before Christmas, it was a change of opponent for Lawrence. But finally, he gets his man now, if you like, who's a seasoned guy. I mean, what's the thinking then around the bubble, uh, talking to people about the bill, about Lawrence's chances? And, you know, there has been that talk about him moving to heavyweight at some point as well. So what's your flavour of the whole thing and, and the opportunity he has ahead of him? Look, it's a, it's a tough fight. Um... Glowacki's no mug. I know he mightn't be well known that much in the UK to a lot of kind of ca casual fans, but he, he's a proper legitimate world contender, former world champion. This is a tough, tough ask, and this is a real test of how good Lawrence Acoli is. We, we've obviously seen him at the Rio Olympics, but let's remember he didn't have much of an amateur background, has only got into the sport late. Um, so he's been a work in progress throughout his professional career. Has had some good wins, some quite ugly nights. The Matty Askin fight was uh, awful to watch. He got the win that night. Um, Isaac Chamberlain was a terrible fight. But with McGuigan, he's kind of had his... He's, they've kind of honed his skills a fair bit and they've kind of using that awkwardness, that range he has. And I think that's... He's, he's become a kind of a, a better fighter to watch. He's experienced the bubble for Christmas, as you mentioned, so he knows what it's all about this week. It is a big chance for him. It's a big chance to raise his profile, headline, and a card. The heavyweight move, I think the first thing for them is to go and try and follow um, Usyk and become undisputed cruiserweight champion. I think that's their aim. But as we know, the heavyweight's where the money is, and if a big money fight comes up there, then it'll be hard to turn that down as well, especially if he's world WBO champion. He can move up to heavyweight, and he can instantly become the mandatory for the WBO heavyweight title. Chris, I speak about Akoli quite a lot, and like you just mentioned then, I think there's been a massive improvement under Shane McGuigan uh, with Lawrence. I think you mentioned again, Glowatsky there, he's one of the top contenders, you know, one of the top cruiserweights out there. Lawrence wins this on Saturday. One, do you think he can do it, or do you think he does do it? But two then, it puts him as one of the, one of the top fighters in the cruiserweight division, so the, the next step would be to unify, to, to unify, but... Where does this put Lawrence in the British sort of pound pound list? You've got to remember Olympian inside 20 odd fights. He's been moved very fast as a professional. You know, where does it put him? In terms of the current British fighters, obviously Britain has had a slight bit of a downturn in the last few years. Yeah. We haven't had, there's not as many champions in, in this country at the minute, but. Pound for pound among British cruiserweights, I think he's got a long way to go. You're looking at. David Hay, you're looking at the cat, Carl Thompson, you're, mm -hmm. you're looking at Glenn McCrory, even, even Bellew, who, who, who mm -hmm. won a world title at Cruiserweight. Big so, Enzo Mack. Look, yeah. Big Enzo Mack as well. Yeah. Big, big. Um, and it, he's so he's leader. got a long way to go in that sense. But if he wins this, if he wins another belt, the, the big fight at Cruiserweight is obviously Breedis, yeah. um, which would be a very, very big ask. Um, mm -hmm. But a winnable fight for him. And if he wins that, then I think you would have to put him up there as one of the best yeah. British cruiserweights if he went on to win that fight. Yeah, there's someone banging on your door now, Chris. I think it's Johnny Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about Johnny, yeah. Forgot about Johnny. Oh, well. Now, yeah. listen, just 
In terms of, we, we just touched upon it. We're going to talk more a little bit about, you know, what the, the undercard as well. But I just, when you mentioned then about cruiserweights and, and everything else, it's just occurred to me. David Hayes made comments about Hay and Fury, uh, Hay, about Fury and AJ, which of course the big news, which I'm sure is in the bubble as well, is the announcement about these contracts being signed for the two-fight deal between Fury uh, and AJ. I mean, what's the thought in the bubble? I mean, I'm sure it's been a talking point. Are we any really? Are we any further ahead with all of this now? We're not, we're not really. Look, it, is it progress? Yes. There's, there's ink on the paper. There, there's, there's a lot of things agreed that can bring down fights. But the major issue with any negotiation is, is, is money. How much are they going to get? And the venue is so kind of, has such a big say on where and how much they earn. So if you, you agree to certain amounts, you, you sign a contract for certain things, but if suddenly their venue doesn't come to fruition where they think it would be and how much they think it would be for, then both fighter can walk away from it. So I'm not sure how much value there is in that contract if you sign it and then if you're not happy with the money, you can walk away with it. I'm sure uh, Anthony there, who, who signed a lot of contracts in his time, you want to know how much you're going to earn for each fight before you sign for it. So if you sign and you think you're going to get X amount and then suddenly it's half that, or even 10, 20 million pound less, you're going to walk away from that contract and they either fight can do that. So for me, this fight isn't happening until they agree uh, a site mm. and they agree on the money because that's the major issue. Everything else can kind of fall in line after that, I think. But until they get the money, until everybody involved, two fighters and the whole teams are happy with the money that's going to be made, I think we should kind of hold off and be too excited about it for now. And Anthony, because we don't see this, yeah. we're, we're not privy to these contract talks and everything else. You are, as Chris yeah. has alluded to there, you've done lots of these deals. You, yeah. you were self-managed throughout your I career was, as well. I was so, self, yeah. Uh, you've had big world title fights. So how, how kind of silly can these negotiations no, it, get? They can do it. And listen, a fight of that magnitude, it's something like, Chris said then it could be an, <laughs> it could be 10, 20 million less. Like, that's crazy, but that's the kind of numbers that are involved. You won't get in out of bed for that. Fight. I don't know. But uh, no, a lot of my thought would rely on, on gates, on, you know, ticket sales and stuff like that. So what works for me, but like you say, it's, it's the biggest fight to be made in boxing. It's the biggest fight to be made in British boxing history. It, like you say, until the site, until the venue's confirmed, I don't believe we are any further on realistically. Um, but listen, there's a few sort of decencies that have been crossed. So it can only be a positive move, but I still think until that venue signed, like we said then, it's, um, we'll, we'll know or believe a lot more once that venue's agreed. So, Chris, if we were putting it to you now, venue, time, everything, where, where would you put your money on it being, uh, if everything is ironed out money-wise and everything else? I, I think you'd have to go with Saudi Arabia. Um, as, as frustrating as that will be for British fans, um, yeah. but they won't be able to travel. Unlikely they would be able to travel there yeah. and then... If they can, there'll be quarantine issues and all of that. So I think it's a big disappointment for, for fans in this country that the biggest fight in British boxing history will take place in the Middle East towards the end, possibly, of a pandemic, which will restrict them from going to it, which is such a huge shame. But money talks in boxing more than any other sport, really. So I think that we're heading to the Middle East. If it's not Saudi Arabia, I think it'll be another state in that country, uh, country in that um, region, sorry. Chris? Proud Irishman, me and Dom have been speaking just before St. Patrick's Day. Give us your favourite Irish fighter of all time. Um, mine, and I'm not saying he's the best of all time, but I think he's up there. Um, uh, Wayne McCullough, um, I oh, grew yeah. up on him. Um, he, he, he won the silver medal mm. uh, at Barcelona in 92. And yeah. I was a bit young then. I don't remember much of it, but I know they trained at um, the Holy Family Boxing Club in my hometown in Drogheda. Um, for that Olympics, Michael Carute won the gold and he went pro then and um, I was a proud member um, enlisted by my dad in the Pocket Rocket fan club um, <laughs> so um, which was an actual thing back in the day um, but yeah, great, great fighter um, hard, really hard man um, unfortunately the only time I ever got him to see him live was against uh, Scott Harrison which yeah. He had a, a terrible a night that night up in yeah, Glasgow. Scott was brilliant. That, yeah. that was brutal. Um, but 
super bantamweight, bantamweight, um, a really, really, fight. really good fight, a very, very skillful. And, uh, I'd have loved to. I would have loved to see him against Casamayor again in yeah. the pros. That would have been yeah. good. But and what about current Irish fighters? Well, look, yeah, obviously the current ones at the minute, Katie Taylor out there, Carl Frampton um, going to be a three-weight world champion in, in the first for, from the island of Ireland to do that if he pulls it off uh, next month. So, yeah, we've got we've got uh, plenty coming through still and plenty of good amateurs as well. So Irish boxing still booming. And, of course, you, you mentioned the Holy Family. I hope I embarrass you. Your big fighting family, the McKenna's. His brother Damien running the club there now. Yep. His dad heavily involved in the scene over there. One of the main men of Irish amateur boxing. Christy Senior, Christy Junior, you're looking at here. Yep. Who needs a haircut, by the way? <laughs> one more, haircut, yeah. one more yeah. about Irish um, standouts. Joe Ward's back in action. Looking yeah. forward to seeing him back out in action, Chris. Definitely. He obviously had a horrible, horrible night on his debut. Yes. Uh, dislocated mm. his knee. Um, I can own it. Uh, I have actually done that myself as well, but yes. not in a boxing ring. Um, <laughs> but we won't go into detail on that story. Um, but yeah, so I'm hoping that kind of that knee holds up now and it doesn't yeah. have an effect on him. What a great amateur. Amazing I'd have loved boy. to have seen him more in the amateurs as well. He was yeah. closing in on the Cuban uh, La Cruz, um, who's an unbelievable boxer. But he's decided to go pro. Yeah. Hopefully, he can get over that big blip now and he can get back into action and get some momentum behind him. Uh, over in the States. Well, Chris, enjoy the bubble. Enjoy the rest of the fight week, and, and I'm sure uh, Lawrence will, will get the job done. It could be a really good fight. But uh, thanks very much for joining us as well. Enjoy the rest of St. Pat's Day as well. Locked in your room. Probably not ideal, but <laughs> yes, make, take make, make the best of it. Chris McKenna there. Thanks, the guys. Take it easy. Boxing correspondent from the Daily Star. So, uh, yeah, nice to catch up on, on all the info yeah. and what's in the bubble and everything else. So, there we go. Lawrence Acoli, though, has this big opportunity, the WBO Cruiserweight Championship against Christoph Glavatsky at the weekend. And our friends at Boxing Social with Rob Tebbett, they caught up with Lawrence a little bit earlier. How does the fight end? We've not spoke about Glavatsky. I mean, obviously, I know by this point, um, you know, what a grizzled veteran he is. He's been in with a lot of, gr lot of great fighters. Stop Marco Hook winning with Alexander Usyk. How does Lawrence Okoli deal with Christoph Glavatsky? Uh, I think it's going to be yeah, interesting. It could either be really one-sided in my favour or it could end up being like a tough fight for, you know, six, seven rounds. And then I think my youth and um, ruggedness is going to um, out-rugged his ruggedness and I'll, and I'll get the... I, I, I personally believe I'll stop him in this fight. Um, and if not, then I'll just, you know, it would, it's, it's, I'll be shocked. Do you know what I mean? So I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win by stoppage. Do you feel like you get enough credit for what you've achieved in such a short space of time? You can be um, honest. Uh, I feel like after I win this fight, I'll see what the the temperature is like. Do you know what I mean? And then I'll ask that. As of right now, do you know what I mean? It's I've won, you know, these titles, but it's not a stick, like a like a, you know world titles. Like okay, this is like forever. Of course, European whatever it is, but a world titles like you know you've hit the pinnacle of the sport. Of course, there's more like unifications and whatever else but um after i win this fight it'll be interesting to see what the reactions like you know i mean as of right now in terms of credit like um it's like it's 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 it's, it's, it's shifting obviously with you know better performances and work with shane and stuff but ultimately the most important thing is winning do you know what i mean so after i've won this fight it's a this i've won all of the domestic titles and then a world title so um i expect to be spoken to with uh an element of respect, but we'll see. So respect and winning, two key words that you pick out there, Anthony. And and I think that, you know, he yeah. deserves a lot of respect considering the very limited amateur background, but he still is an Olympian. Yeah. And then what he's done in a very limited, in terms of fights, career to date, is won everything that's been put in front of him. He's got a world title fight and his style has changed. It's, yeah, it, it's certainly improved and sort of a lot more fan friendly now. Early on in his career, he got to stick, you know, Listen, the Matty Askin fight, it was, it was an horrible affair mm. and he's probably lucky not to be throughout that night. And Chamberlain wasn't great either. Chamberlain was wasn't yeah. great either, but you've got to give him credit. You know, like I say, you've got to put some respect on his mm. name. He's had 15 fights, he just mentioned that. He's done everything sort of the old-fashioned way. You're British, you're Commonwealth, you're European. He's now fighting a legitimate top cruiserweight for a world title. Whether it's vacant or not, it's, it's, it's a top fight in the division. After that then, I mean, he's got to come through side. It's not an easy fight whatsoever, but... He then pushes on for unifications, and we spoke about it before the big fights. He's big enough to move up to heavyweight. Yeah. But no, I think um, 
You know what I'm saying? I think some respect does need putting on his name, especially if he does it Saturday. And we shouldn't jump the gun with this because if he can unify belts at Cruiserweight, that would be immense. That would be oh, some massive. achievement. Incredible. But I mean, it would be really interesting to see him as a heavyweight, though, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Like I said, he's big enough and I believe he's got that. He's got the power to take up to, um, to heavyweight. But again, we, we're talking about someone who's got all those titles, been to the Olympics, but mm. I've had what? He's had less than... Yeah, it's fights. crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> Both amateur and professional. So crazy. And it, it is. It's a great story. No, fantastic achievement. Let's hope he goes on and, and gets this title and, and goes on and unifies. And it, it's a, an interesting fight card as well. Yeah. With the uh, the match room, obviously, top of the bill, we've got a colleague, Glavatsky. But when you look at some of the, the names on the undercard, yeah. uh, and again, you know, some of them still finding the feet, you know, a, again, in terms of. Uh, novice fighters, if you like, but yeah. uh, you know uh, some of the female fighters on there, which we've seen Ali before and, and Scotney, you know, real talents that you want to see more of now. I, I think it's a fantastic undercard. I, um, for me, I'm so happy to see Joe Cardi in the back. I think he's one of the best uh, prospects in British boxing, if you can still call him a prospect. I think he's um, very, very good. I think great chance of winning a world title. I'm very confident he will do. Um, Ellie Scotney. I'm hearing a lot about I've only seen a little bit mm. of it, but what I have seen, really impressed. Again, the women's game, absolutely flying. And if Fowler's back out. Billum Smith, ever improving. Both Fowler and Billum Smith, mm. really improving under Shane McGuigan. Um, and Lally, she's back out again. Women's game mm. going from strength to strength. And certainly, a lad who we know, and the undercard, his only name was only on that. Uh, Brad Ray, yeah. Manchester lad, um, Blaine Eunice, out of the and Jim. Mm. Fighting another good fighter who I actually know, um, Lee Cutler. Two lads who I know very well. I think that's a, that's a fantastic fight. And depending on what time it's on, that might uh, be the pick of the undercard fights. Two, you know, hungry fighters, both taking a chance, which it's nice to see. We've seen it a little bit over this uh, pandemic where the prospect go against prospect. And I think sort of the winner, listen, the winner goes on, pushes on mm. to bigger things. But also, listen, the loser, it's not the, it's one loss early on in the career yeah. against another top prospect. So I'm really looking forward to that fight. Yeah, he learned his trade St. John's in Charlton, Brad yeah. Ray, and he's got a, a, a real dig on him, hasn't he? He's, he's, he's a real talent, he I think. I've, I've knew Brad since, you know, 12 years of age, something like that. I've watched him since an amateur win national title. Very good fighter. And um, listen, he's got his hands full on Saturday night as well, Lee, I know. Yeah. He's coached very well. Um, yeah, they're confident. They're confident going in there, getting the win. They both, both lads see it as, and it is, it's a great opportunity for both of them. For um, the winner to kick on, but I think these kind of fights should be encouraged a little bit more in boxing. And the winner, there's going to be a winner, there's going to be a loser, unless there's a draw. Mm. Um, both fighters come back and be better for it. And of course, we've seen some shocks. Fowler is in action. And what yeah. we don't want is a shock with Fowler because no. what we want to see again is Fowler Fitzgerald. It's a rematch. Yeah. Uh, which again, he's always going to get talked about. But Fowler needs to get the job done, and, and we can look forward to hopefully those two locking horns again in yeah. the summer. I know Fitzgerald's back in. Back yeah, in track. it's great that he's back in. And I, Listen, it's it spoke about, and for me, the most important thing is Scott, Scott Fitzgerald is back in the boxing gym, yeah. doing what he's good at. And I just, listen, if we see it this summer, I don't know, or it gets later in the year, I don't know. But for me, that fight, the demand for that fight is mm -hmm. always going to be there. And, you know, Fowler, fair play to him, says, you know, I'm not going to wait around forever, I'm just going to kick on with yeah. my own career. Um, whether I think summer's too soon for it, probably. But um, hopefully we do get to see that again after the great first encounter. Well, it was a great fight. And again, you know, Fowler, he's, he's 30 now. and I think he's yeah. just turned 30, hasn't he? And Very experienced. Again, yeah. he's not lacking in confidence. He wants no. those big nights. He wants those big opportunities. He's had his blip now. So it's, it's, it's an interesting time ahead for him. It is. And, uh, you know, Selfridge has always had massive belief in his own ability. Fantastic amateur, like I said. Another Olympian who we're uh, speaking about. And he feels he's improving great, great strides under uh, Shane McGregor again. So I think, listen, he's going to look to be pushing on now to that European level, which he is, you know, mm. on Saturday. And, um, and it'd be a massive 12 months for Anthony Fowler. Yeah, uh, and again, just a, an interesting thing, because Shane's got a busy night, Shane McGuigan. Yes, he He's has. got three fights, three fighters. Yeah. Uh, now, hopefully nothing goes astray for his fighters and there's no shocks. Yeah. And Because we've seen recently, I know we touched upon it a few weeks ago, about a dressing room. When you've yeah. got a few fighters in a dressing room, and you're all course. fighting, and if something goes wrong early on, yeah. how that can affect. And I think Josh Warrington's mentioned it. It kind of Definitely. the Reese Small fight before he went out to fight Lara. There was a, a downer. Of course, there was, and I've, I've experienced it myself. Yourself with Marcus, uh, Morrison, Marcus Morrison, Morrison and, yourself, and yeah. stuff, and yeah, it, it can be. It can be. Listen, it can be a great night for a trainer for a stable. Yeah. Or it can be an horrible night, and obviously they're both in lively fights, um, especially Bill M. Smith. So that you'd think that's going to go on earlier. So then to go into a world title fight 
ideally, listen, and it, I don't care what you say, like the energy sort of passes on. Yeah. Billum Smith and Anthony Fowler have two good wins. That's only going to pass on to a call. You no doubt they've been in camp together. They've got the same date. And Shane as well. And Shane as well. And uh, I know each fight is different. And Shane's got to do his best to handle emotions, not to have anything carrying on onto the next one. But of course, he's only human. So a lot does um, also ride on those first two fights before the main event. Well, turning the main events uh, across the pond, there was a fight that we were talking about last wow. week. And uh, again, I've got to give you some credit because you got them both bang on. Thank so, you, Dan. Again, we'll, we'll get some Cheltenham tips <laughs> off you at the end of this because, uh, yeah, in terms of, uh, we'll get to Estrada Gonzalez in a sec, but the on the undercard, there was Breckhouse who was trying to get revenge on McCaskill. Yeah. Uh, it was McCaskill's night yeah. again. Very the good. scorecards were a bit off, I think, maybe. It was yeah. all, I mean, Absolutely. it was a unanimous decision, which I think is fair enough. Definite but, winner, yeah. But Breckhouse came back into the fight. But yes. McCaskill proved she's just an absolute on, handful. Relentless and uh, it was a great win. She proved the first time there's no fluke. And she's one of the top names in women's boxing mm. now. And obviously now there's she's been mentioned with both either Clarissa Shields or Katie Taylor. So um and she deserves to be up there. She deserves yeah. to be up there. Great performance, great win. And um yeah, fair play. I, I do want to take credit and say, yep, I did call them both <laughs> by decision. However, I don't think it should have gotten both right. I thought Chocolatito was... Listen, I don't believe it was this robbery, but I thought um, Chocolatito was hard done by it. Yeah. And again, we're talking about scorecards. One of the judges has since been suspended. How you come up with that scorecard, I'll never know. Well, on that, Unbelievable I mean, fight, though. Yeah, uh, first and foremost, uh, as you said last week, we said it can't be yeah. a bad fight, and it, it wasn't. It was as, it no. was better than we probably anticipated because it was better than the first one. You, yeah. you could say it was very tight, very close, yeah. and it, and again, it was a little bit of what you like. Uh, and I think probably early on, Estrada showed a lot, you know big power punches, a lot of aggression, yeah. but Chocolatito showed what he's all about. Nah. Yeah, as you, and you mentioned the scorecard, but the, if you think about it, the, the scorecard was two wide, one one seven, one one yeah. eleven. But if that judge in really, really tight rounds, rounds. is just favouring the one thing that he likes yeah, better more. from one fight. And you're going to get a wider card. You're going to get a wide card, but uh, yeah. it might not be as... If he explains himself like that and says, look, every round was tight, yeah. but I just preferred it, his yes, work his tiny work, bit. You know, I was looking at yeah. that. I mean, there's a few of the rounds where you thought, ah, no matter what you like, to struggle to see how you've yeah. seen it yeah. that way. But um, Yeah, the final round, for instance. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course, but... Uh, Chocolatito, what a fighter. Yeah. And listen, Estrada as well, but he, he was a little bit heavier. Um, he's, listen, for me, he's a future Hall of Famer, without a doubt. Mm. But um, I think he'd get a lot more credit if he, he you know, so he would have been a bit gone through the weight. Not gone through the weights because he, he could have stayed down. But I mean, if he was in a higher weight division, more mainstream, he, um, a lot more people would know him. But I'm glad he's getting some recognition, better late than never, because an unbelievable fighter. And hopefully the best news to come out of that is that they'll do it again. Yes, <laughs> the, uh, the decider. I know after it, Chocolatito was like, no, I felt like I won it. It's 2-0 now. Mm. But I think now, thankfully, they're earning the money. They should be earning. Mm. And I'm guessing for a third fight, decider, the pay would go. And it would certainly be deserved. The pay would go up again. So hopefully yeah. we do. And I think we do get to see a third fight between them. Yeah, I think sometimes the mentality with with kind of um, fighters, maybe you know, from from that part of the world, from Central yeah. America, if you like, that they don't consider a loss the same way no. as a loss is considered maybe yeah. in the UK. It, it's kind of well, if it if we can do it again and we get more money, then I'm Makes not going to cry about yes. that fight. It was a great fight, not it didn't go my way. Let's yeah. do it again. You know what I mean? There's there's yeah. less store on that. Oh, of course, you're in you're in a business. You're in this game. You know, to provide a living for whether it be your family or just. You know, to earn an income, mm. and if you're involved in fights like that, and you get offered to do it again for for better money, then why not? It makes sense, makes good business sense. It does. Now, a fight that was announced uh, recently as well, which is a really interesting one, is a fella you've known for God knows how yes. long, Liam Smith. You've trained alongside for uh, for how long? Since uh, you uh, were all, did well, you all join at roughly the same time? To no, uh, I Joe was a Gallagher's? little bit before Liam, but oh, it must have been ten years. Ten years. Yeah. He actually wasn't great back then, so yeah. Really? Is, yeah, so that's how long ago it was. Right. Well, Liam has got this fight against Kurbanov in Russia, which yeah. is it's kind of, a, I suppose, a bit left field, this one. Yeah, it is. It was, um, you know, you don't see many UK fighters going over to Russia. Mm. I can only think of an handful, you know, in recent years. And listen, it's a proper fight. Um, Kurbanov was, I'm sure, he's with Adam Booth for quite a bit. Um, he can fight. 
it's over there, Liam, going, or, um, you know, in the lion's den, as they'd say. It's, um, he's over in LA at the minute. So I think it is, ah, so it's May the Apes, May the Apes the fight. But um, I think it's going to be served as some kind of eliminator for a world title. Obviously, it's the championship weight. Liam that was last against Sam Eginton. He's been out a few times since and looked good, but that was in the middleweight division. Liam feels strong at Light Mill. That's where he feels best. Yeah. Tough night, tough night, no doubt about it, but I know Liam believes stylistically it's a good fight for him. So what's Liam's plan? I mean, he's held a world title, of course, yeah. as we know. What, what's his plan now? Does he just feel that there's one big hurrah in him, one yeah, world title? Yeah, he, he believes there's another world title in he's him. He still feels very yeah. fresh and ambitious for, for titles. Yeah, he, he feels like there's another world title in him. And, and Liam also, like I say, he's out in LA at the minute. I'm not too sure exactly what he's going to do. I know he's back the weekend. He's going to decide whether he's going to go back out there or stay here. Um, he knows he's at the point in his career where you know, he's not got too much longer left, so he wants to... He's one of those avenues what he's always talked about. He loves it out over there in America. So whether he's going to come back and then whether he's going to go back um, and base himself here for this camp, we'll find out weekend. But um, he sees this as a good fight for him and it's a fight that gets him back, right back in the picture for a world title shot. You mentioned that obviously he's, he's kind of mooched about in middleweight as well, but like yeah. middleweight is where, where he, he wants to be. But yeah. talking of middleweight and... The events of the past week, Marvin Hagler yeah. passing away, which, again, the four kings, we, a wow. lot's been said quite rightly yeah. in the last few days, the four kings, but you just wouldn't have thought Marvin Hagler at 66 would be the first to go, would you? I, I know, not when he, he looks as well as he yeah. did. Um, you know, Massive shame, it's, I mean, it is when anyone loses their life, but someone who you consider to be, he was just, I don't use the pit of hard work, wasn't, it, it paid off for him. He got his title shot way after he should have done, but how he... I don't know, I think you being a bit older, you could tell just how big, big yeah, Marvin Hagler was. What are you about? He, uh, it's the lighting to come over here, it was um, to win the title against an unbelievable fighter in Alan Minter. And I saw someone mention it the other day. You know, we mentioned the Minter fight, but he also beat an unbelievable fighter in Tony Simpson and, and looked, you know, mm. unbelievable doing it. Some people would argue he was the best of the four kings. I think we've all got our favourites. Uh, but, you know, going off results will always be the controversy with the Sugar Ray Leonard fight. Yeah. He'll argue that I beat all three of them. It's uh, just an unbelievable fighter and just how hard he worked, you know. Mm. He never let those, um, he mentioned, didn't he? It's hard to get out of bed when you're wearing silk pyjamas. Yeah, he's, that's his fav fav well, it's famous quote. Saying, it's a brilliant quote, quote, isn't it? And, and the thing with him, but I, it's, it's funny now when you see athletes and, and how, if you, if you look at athletes across the board and across sports yeah. and you, you look at, say, a Ronaldo who's 36 yeah. and he's still absolutely at the yeah, top of his game, yeah. he's a physical specimen. When you think of these guys, you forget that he was 32, he wasn't yet 33 when he walked away in 87 yeah. after yes. fighting Leonard. You think, hang wow. on a minute, surely you you're kind of your prime. And listen, but it's different eras, obviously, course, is it? But, and he'd, he'd had um, a long career, he worked so hard yeah. to get that title shot, which was, it was wrong, it was wrong, but when he, when he got that shot, he took it hmm. with both hands. And let's not forget, with the Leonard fight, and I'm a massive Sugar Ray Leonard fan, Thought, I think, like most, probably thought Hagler had done enough. Um, and that was 32, 33. Mm. He still had many more big nights left in him. I know he didn't take the decision well, but uh, listen, an unbelievable mm. fighter, one of the all time greats, and possibly the greatest middleweight that ever, that ever lived. Yeah, and, and another interesting facet to his life is then he, he goes to Italy. Yes. Learns Italian. Mm. Yeah. Stars in, in movies over there. Yes. I mean, that's just fantastic, isn't oh, it? It's, it's some life. Um, he would have had some stories to tell. Well, he, he did do like it was. Mm. Uh, he was just. He was just around at a great time, and he was arguably the best of them all. Yeah. Any news from your your lot, if you like, from, from, from Joe Gallagher with with you Joe's, in Bolton, and then your own fighters. I know there's going to be some huge news. What day? I finally, say it. I think. Think it's going to be Friday. Come on, this has been the week Jones. for news leaking out. So come on. Possibly. All I can say, I think it's sort of. It's heavily rumored it'd be one of the biggest. Or women's fight that could be possibly made in in the sport. We spoke a little bit about it with Natasha herself, mm. so there's one. Um, I think everyone else are waiting. Obviously, Liam, unsure what um, you're going to do just yet, but he's involved in a fight, um, and that's it. Then just waiting, sort of the fighters themselves. They'll, they'll have a chance very soon. Now, now we're getting a lot more dates uh, getting talked about. We'll have some news very soon. Mm. Well, we we'll look forward to Natasha getting a big, big fight that she deserves. Yep. St. Patrick's Day. Yes. You mentioned it before. Who's your favourite Irish fighter? Wow. Female first. Female. 
Wow, well, it's uh, there's only one. There's only <laughs> one one female fighter. Just, I'm a massive Katie Taylor fan. Great girl, great. Um, you know what she's done for so long as an amateur. Mm. Like I, I was, um, I was on the Katie Taylor Katie Taylor fan club before she turned professional. Yeah. What she's done for women's boxing is unbelievable. She's um, she's one of the very main reasons why it's how it is today. So yeah, female yeah. one, Katie Taylor. And people forget that she actually played for the Republic of Ireland football. Yeah, she you know, a goal scoring midfielder. So yeah, there you play. go. But uh, Katie, so uh, in terms of male, who are you going for? Male. Um, oh, it's an interesting one, Chris McKenna, Wayne McCullough. Yeah, so it's he a great shout out. Outside, like you say, the box, but mm. um, I was the, you know, I'm a big, big Steve Collins fan as well. Yeah. But I think um, probably have to say Brian McCullough again. But there's some yeah. unbelievable fights. Even now, recently, I was a massive Andy Lee fan, Carl Frampton fan. Hopefully, he, he makes it. The first freeweight um, world champion from Ireland, but mm. I think if he had to say someone, especially at the time, it's the old story. Um, it's a little bit younger, but watched it countless times since. I don't know whether it be YouTube or on video. Uh, Barry McGuigan. Yeah, against Pedroza. Unbelievable. Road. Incredible night. Well, Anthony, as ever, thank you very much indeed. Thank but enough. we uh, look forward to the matchroom show at the weekend. Laura Sicoli against Christoph Glazatsky. Come on, out. Blavatsky, so I got it, I got so it right fun. all the way through, didn't I? Yeah. Anyway, we look forward to that fight of the weekend and uh, plenty more action. And of course, as ever, we'll be with you next week to review that and preview all the forthcoming action. It's going to be the big boys that we're looking at next week. Dillian. It is. It is. Can you get revenge? Dillian in Gibraltar. Next week. Yeah. So we look forward Come to that. Rock. Thank you very much indeed.